Father, in mercy on all of us, come afresh and wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ. Make me clean in thine own eyes. And fill me with the Holy Spirit. Take thy word, the letter that killeth, but by the Holy Spirit give life. For without thee we can do nothing. Our expectation is in thee and thee only. For the day we put our expectation in a man is the day we walk away disillusioned. Our hope is in God for anything that God can do to the weakest and basest of men. Come, Lord, and glorify thy name in our lives through this message, through this time together, by the workings of the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Word of God. We ask these things in the name that we love, the name that we live for, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Tonight, I'd like to speak on the single greatest tragedy this world faces today. The single greatest tragedy this world faces today. Compromising Christianity. Compromising Christianity. And oh, that every Christian in this building would cry from their inner being right now at the outset of the sermon, Search me! Search me! O oh God! And know my heart! Try me! And know my thoughts! And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know, know my heart. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. 1 John 3 verse 20 Oh Christian, if your heart, if your heart condemns your life, if your heart condemns your life, then I implore you, I implore you, tonight, I implore you tonight, to sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Reap in mercy. Break up your fellow ground. Break up your fellow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. It is time to seek the Lord till He come and rain righteousness upon you. Hosea 10 verse 12. So to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Do what God requires of you tonight. Break up. Break up your fallow ground. That hardened crust of earth that somehow has formed and covers the fertile soil of your heart. Tragically. Enabling you to accept and tolerate a life of shameful compromise. Break up your fellow ground. But how? How, you may ask? Oh, I believe that fellow ground, that hardened crust will break up in moments, here tonight, but only if you only if you carefully and prayerfully, carefully and prayerfully expose your heart, expose your heart to the unadulterated, 
uncompromising standard of this holy book once again. Only if you carefully and prayerfully expose your heart to the unadulterated, uncompromising standard of this holy book once again. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Jeremiah 23 verse 29. For the word, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrews 4 verse 12. Oh, Christian. Christian. Expose your heart tonight, carefully now, and prayerfully, carefully and prayerfully, to the unadulterated, uncompromising standard of this book. Expose your heart carefully and prayerfully to what this book declares. When a Christian lives in a continual state of shameful compromise. When a Christian continually fails God, firstly, firstly, with his eyes. When a Christian continually fails God, with his eyes. When does a Christian fail God with his eyes according to this book? In 2 Samuel 11 verse 1 we read that Israel went to war. Israel went to war but David tarried still at Jerusalem. David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in the eventide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman very beautiful to look upon. David sent and inquired after the woman. Now beloved, you may believe that David later, later tragically went on to commit adultery with her. But Jesus said in Matthew 5 verse 28 that whosoever looketh whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already. Whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. That First look was not David's fault. But the second look was, brother. In this world, the devil will place many things before us that we did not choose or want to behold. But it is our choice. It is our choice if we look again. It is our choice if we keep on looking. We read in James chapter 1 verse 14 that every man is tempted. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. It bringeth forth sin. Temptation is not sin, brother. 
But that second look is, sister. That second look is, sister. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Exodus 20, verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But this commandment in, in God's Ten Commandments is strangely linked to verse 17. It's strangely linked to verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. But it doesn't end there. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Also, David. This holy book condemns. This holy book condemns men having eyes full of adultery. And that cannot cease from sin. Eyes full of adultery. And that cannot cease from sin. 2 Peter 2 verse 14. But oh, if a Christian, if a Christian continually fails God with his eyes, that is tragic, beloved. That is tragic. I made a covenant with mine eyes. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? Why then should I look upon a young woman? Job 31 verse 1. I, as a married man, came to a place in my life where I made a covenant with mine eyes not to look that second look at what I know the devil will continually place before me in this life. Like Daniel, young Daniel, who purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat. He made a calculated choice not to defile himself in God's eyes by breaking God's commandments, by going against the known will of God and become defiled. I too, like Daniel, purposed in my heart a calculated moment in my life I made a covenant with mine eyes not, not to look at things that would defile me in God's eyes. Not to allow my eyes to behold and lust. I know a lady let's just do this in Romans 6 verse 11 Paul writes to all Christians likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Even your eyes, brother, instruments of righteousness unto God. Even your eyes, sister. This godly old woman shared with me 
of her godly, godly husband who I'd known for many years when he died. She said how when they were first married, they were unsaved. A young married couple. And she said his eyes filled her with fear as he betrayed her while she looked. His eyes looked at other women. She felt fearful by his eyes. She felt betrayed by his eyes. She felt defiled by his eyes. But then she said, Keith, God stepped in, in mercy. Why were we so young in our marriage, with all the fear in my heart, watching his eyes? And God saved his soul. And not once, from that day till the day he died as an old man, did I ever see his eyes betray me again. That salvation, Keith. That's Christ's salvation. Jesus Christ didn't come to save his people in their sins. He came to save his people from their sins. If you'll have it, brother. If you'll have it, sister. But oh, if a Christian, if a Christian continually fails God with his eyes, Christian, if you continually fail God with your eyes, I implore you here tonight, I implore you here tonight to sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fellow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till He come. Not just for some short prayer at the end of this meeting. It is time to seek the Lord. I will not let thee go except thou bless me until thou hast meet with me and deal with my sin. It's time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. When a Christian, when a Christian continually fails God, firstly, with his eyes, with his eyes, but secondly, secondly, with his thoughts, with his thoughts, men of corrupt minds, 2 Timothy 3 verse 8, men of corrupt minds, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which were not convenient. To do those things which are not convenient. Romans 1 verse 28. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and mind, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and mind. Ephesians 2 verse 3, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23 verse 7, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Matthew 15 verse 19, Out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. An heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. An heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. Proverbs 6 verse 18. You see, God says as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. An heart that deviseth Wicked imagination. Eat that be swift in running to mischief. Proverbs 6 verse 18. Their feet run to iniquity. 
Their feet run to evil. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Isaiah 59, verse 7. Woe, woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it. Micah 2, verse 1. You see, as he thinketh in his heart, God says, so is he what you think. You are. You are. According to this holy book, that is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. His thoughts. Isaiah 55 verse 7. You know how that goes literally. Let the wicked forsake his way. It doesn't say and. There's another person now. The unrighteous man his thoughts. Let the wicked forsake his way. The unrighteous man. He's speaking to the same man. The unrighteous man his thoughts. You see. As he thinketh in his heart so is he. Let the wicked forsake his way. The unrighteous man, his thoughts. Isaiah 55 verse 7. And bringing into captivity, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 10. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. Romans 12, verse 2. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue. And if there be any praise. Think on these things. Think. Literally in the Greek. Allow your mind to be occupied with these things. Allow your mind to accept. And be occupied with these things. Philippians 4 verse 8. Think on these things. Whatsoever things are true. I want to challenge you young people. I want to challenge you older people. The music you listen to. The magazine you read when you look around and no one that knows you profess Christ is watching. But God's watching. And the devil. The programs you look at on video, on television, I dare you, I dare you, get a big piece of paper and write in bold letters this verse. Make it the same size as the television screen, give it a chance. And as you put that on and sit, just remember what God says, whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be anything that can build you up in its context, spiritually, with integrity, and keep you safe. Allow your minds to accept such things and be occupied with such things. Or don't watch. And if you're too weak, if you're too weak to put it off, throw it out. Is it worth 
Is entertainment worth being defiled? Young man, by the music you listen to, the books you read, the things that fill up the thoughts of your heart. I read an article a while ago on those who do the most obscene, filthy, depraved things to minors. Without exception, every single one of them, it started when they opened their minds to evil magazines and evil websites. Without exception, it started literally happening. What you allow here, brother, you're in trouble. God doesn't play the fool. As he thinketh in his heart what he allows there and he dwells on. So is he. Or God lies saying that. You decide whether you can play the fool with corrupt, evil, defiling music that's from the pit and the heart of hell and the devil. Let alone anything else. And then name the name of Christ. When a Christian continually fails God, firstly, with his eyes, secondly, with his thoughts, thirdly, with his lips. When does a Christian fail God with his lips, according to this book? Firstly, with lies. Lies? Christian? Does God warn a Christian? Lies? Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Exodus 20, verse 16. An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. Proverbs 12, verse 9. The tongue, the tongue is an unruly evil full of Deadly poison. James 3 verse 9. Lying lips. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord. Proverbs 12 verse 22. But these lips. These lips can lie in other evil ways, Christian. These lips can lie in prayer. When a man's prayers are not meant for God but to impress others, his words rise to heaven as a stench of evil hypocrisy. When a man's prayers are not meant for God but to impress others, his words rise to heaven as a stench of evil hypocrisy. In Matthew 23 verse 14, Christ condemns those who for a pretense, who for a pretense make long prayers. And in Matthew 6, verse 5, he warns us, When thou prayest, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. That word hypocrites is staggering. The original meaning in the Greek, when they used this word, was an actor, hypocrite, an actor on a stage. Someone acting on a stage, hypocrite, Greek. And Jesus, knowing this, said, When thou prayest, Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street that they may be seen of men. 
Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. By the way, they have no reward from God. Nothing. Nothing from heaven will ever reward them. What is their reward then? What they want. To be esteemed in the eyes of men. Long prayers, always in prayer means praying loud anyway, you know. They have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. The most private place you can find in your whole circumstance of life. And God knows and you know that's the most private place you can find on earth. In your circumstances. Enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, Jesus says, to the eyes and the ears of men, brother, sister. Don't shut your door for the eyes and the ears of your children and your wife and your mother and your father and others. Don't go there and shut the door in case they're staggered that you're missing your quiet time and shut the door. But you're not there for God. Be careful. When thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. If you are not faithful in your prayer life when no one is watching, if you are not faithful in your prayer life when no one is watching, your public prayers are evil, hypocritical lies. Evil, hypocritical lies. When a Christian continually fails God with his lips, firstly with lies, but secondly with blasphemy. Blasphemy. Thou shalt not Take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless, but taketh his name in vain. Exodus 20 verse 7. Neither shalt thou profane the name of the Lord thy God. Leviticus 19 verse 12. Christian, don't ever use God's name irreverently. Don't ever use God's name irreverently or as a swear word or curse word in exasperation or anger. When a Christian continually fails God with his lips, firstly with lies, secondly with blaspheme, thirdly, Thirdly, by making oaths to try and add credibility to what he's saying. By making oaths. In Matthew 5 verse 33, Jesus says again, Ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thine head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, yes or no, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. In James, in James chapter 4 verse 12, we read, but above all things, my brethren, I want you to think of that, but above all things, my brethren, swear not, Neither by heaven, neither by the earth, 
neither by any other oath, but let your yes, your yea be yea, and your nay, nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. It is an insult to Christ's name if a Christian is required to say anything more than yes or no to be believed. Can I repeat that? It is an insult to Christ's name if a Christian is required to say anything more than yes or no to be believed. When a Christian continually fails God, continually fails God with his lips, firstly with lies, secondly with blaspheme, thirdly by making oaths, fourthly by using coarse, filthy language. When a Christian continually fails God with his lips by using coarse, filthy language. Put off all filthy communication out of your mouth. Put off all filthy communication out of your mouth. Colossians 3 verse 8. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Ephesians 4 verse 29. Neither filthiness, no foolish talking. Ephesians 5 verse 4. Beloved, this holy book condemns those whose mouth is full of cursing. Romans 3 verse 14. Now that word cursing in the Greek Vile, obscene, offensive, filthy language. All those words. The Greek is so rich, but that is what it says. It condemns those whose mouth is full of cursing. Romans 3 verse 14. But oh, if a Christian, if a Christian continually fails God with his lips, by using coarse, filthy language. That is shameful. That is shameful and tragic, beloved. Tragic! When a Christian continually, continually fails God with his lips, firstly with lies, secondly with blasphemy, thirdly by making oaths, fourthly by using coarse, filthy language. Fifthly, with murmurings, with murmurings, do all things without murmurings. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Philippians 2 verse 14. But wait, that's just the beginning. Verse 15 staggers me. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life. You can't hold forth this book to anyone on earth beginning in your home. If written across your life is not by God the Holy Ghost, blameless, harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of all this perversion, and God wouldn't mock us to tell us that's the testimony you need. But that's not the st- statement. That's the result of the statement. The statement is, do all things, all things without murmurings and disputings and the result you never ever have this testimony until you do the first part the statement that ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke Philippians 2 verse 15 in everything In everything, give thanks. Not for everything. 
that would be obnoxious to God. But in spite of anything God, the sovereign God, allows to come upon you in your life and circumstances, in spite of anything that comes, don't stop giving thanks for all the good multitudes of things just because of one isolated negative thing the devil's got right now. Don't become a perfect murmurer when God wants you to be a perfect worshipper. What are you? And all the devil needs to do is one thing and all the blessings you have that others would crawl on their knees on glass for a mile across the world because they've never had or ever dreamed they could. Just to, but you become a perfect murmurer. In spite of anything, in every circumstance, don't stop praising. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olives shall fail. The fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. There shall be no herd in the store. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Habakkuk 3, verse 17 and 18. Isn't that an amazing testimony? In the set work book of the school of God, that every single thing we have to pass is just there for you to be facing exams till you pass. And if you fail, you fail just because you're going to have to go through the same things until you pass the exam, brother. Nothing's in this book that you don't have to live in the school of God on earth. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olives shall fail, and the, the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stores. Yet! I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Habakkuk 3, verse 17 and 18. When everything, when everything was taken from Job in one devastating, tragic moment, his wife, his helpmeet, In brokenness and bewilderment, turned to him in chapter 2, verse 9, and she cried, Curse God! Curse God! And die! Die! But he said unto her, Thou oh, speakest as one of the foolish women speaker. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Shall we not receive evil? Do we only trust and serve God if everything goes right in life? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Hallelujah. In all this, did not Job sin with his lips. By him, therefore, by Jesus our high priest, who ever liveth to make intercession for us, by him, therefore, let us, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Hebrews 13 verse 15. I, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. The sacrifice of thanksgiving. Psalm 114 verse 17. When a Christian continually fails God with his lips, Firstly, with lies, 
Secondly, with blasphemy. Thirdly, by making oaths. Fourthly, by using coarse, filthy language. Fifthly, murmuring. Sixthly, with whispering. With whispering. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. James 4 verse 11. He that uttereth a slander is a fool. Is a fool! Proverbs 10 verse 18. A whisperer separateth, separateth chief friends. Proverbs 16, verse 28. Where no wood is, where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tale bearer. Now that Hebrew word means literally whisper. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. Proverbs 19.11 Sorry. 26 verse 20. When a Christian continually fails God with his lips, firstly with lies, secondly with blasphemy, thirdly by making oaths, fourthly by using coarse, filthy language, fifthly with murmurings, murmurings, sixthly with whisperings, seventhly, Endless babbling. Babbling. Avoiding. Avoiding vain babblings. Empty talk. Empty talk. 1 Timothy 6 verse 20. But son... Shun vain babblings, worthless talk. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. 2 Timothy 2 verse 16. They will increase unto more ungodliness. In the multitude of words. In the multitude of words, they wanteth not sin. They lack no sin in that life. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Proverbs 10 verse 19. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin. There lacketh no sin. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 6. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature. James 3 verse 6. In the multitude of words, brother, sister, young person, no sin is lacking in that life. God says, argue with him. Empty, void words, that is. Empty talk. A fool. A fool also is full of words. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 14. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 14. A fool uttereth all his mind. 
a fool uttereth all his mind. Proverbs 29 verse 11. A fool's mouth is his destruction. Is his destruction. Proverbs 18 verse 7. He that hath knowledge spareth his word. Spareth his word. He that hath knowledge spareth his word. Proverbs 18 verse 27. Even a fool, even a fool, when he holds his peace, is counted as wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Proverbs 17 verse 28. But wait now. To conclude this point, Beloved, please, listen to these few verses carefully now. What God says about this. A man hath joy when he starts to come to church. Where there's an evangelical message being preached. A man hath joy when his wife decides to live in total subjection to him as a slave. A man has joy when his children are just perfect and don't give him any uphill. They're just perfect. A man has joy when his work all, just the salary, the prosperity, everything goes right. No. You'll never know God's joy with these things. What does God say? The God who created us. Now you can argue with God and say, I'll only know joy when my wife changes, my children change, my work gets steadfast and I can get a good salary. When everything goes right at the church, you won't know any joy, brother. Not the joy God's speaking of. Joy unspeakable. A man hath joy, God's joy, by the answer of his mouth. God says. Proverbs 16, verse 32. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. For he that will love life and see good days. Now, if I had to give all of you a piece of paper and a pen, including children, and you were to be utterly honest, what a man, a woman, a child needs to do, apply his life to, in the light of everything in the Bible, what do you know? To love life. Now that's a staggering word. To love life and see good days. Now God has an only obligation he is obligated to make you love life and see good days. By what? All the things you want to name before you will love life and see good He that will love life and see good days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. 1 Peter 3 verse 10. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. Proverbs 15 Sorry. Proverbs 21 verse 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. From trouble. Keep thy tongue from evil. Keep thy tongue from evil. Psalm 34 verse 13. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the doors of my lips. Keep the doors of my lips. Psalm 141 verse 3. Keep the doors of my lips. When a Christian 
continually fails God. Firstly, with his eyes. Secondly, with his thoughts. Thirdly, with his lips. And finally, with his reaction. with his reactions. The fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, capital S, is temperance. That is self-control. Galatians 5 verse 23. The evidence that the Holy Spirit is controlling a life is self-control in that life. He that is slow to anger, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that rules his spirit, that's in control of his spirit, than he that taketh the city. Proverbs 16, verse 32. He that is slow to wrath, he that is slow to wrath, is of great understanding. But, He that is hasty of spirit, that is quick-tempered, short-tempered, exalteth folly. Exalteth folly. Proverbs 14, verse 29. Love is not easily provoked. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5. That word there is agape love. It's not the human love. That's a different Greek word. It's a love you cannot live. Apart from to the degree you are yielded to God, absolutely surrendered, and controlled, that is filled, means controlled, because of absolute surrender to His will. No fight left. On the altar. The evidence... The Holy Spirit is in control is no matter how trying the circumstances, a spontaneous reaction with God's fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love is not easily provoked. God's love controlling the fruit, the evidence of the Spirit is love. Love suffereth long and is kind, brother. Love covereth a multitude of sins. God's love controlling a man, God living his life through you. Spontaneous reactions because you yielded. The evidence God's in control is no matter how trying the circumstances are, you spontaneously react with the evidence, the fruit, the proof. God the Holy Ghost is there in control of your life. Love is not easily provoked. Be ye angry, And sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. What does that mean? Be ye angry? It doesn't seem God says there, that's the sin. There's righteous indignation. Christ had it. And Christ in us will have it. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't allow other people's failures to eventually cause you to fail more than them in your anger. Give. The discretion of a man deferreth his anger and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. It is his glory The discretion of a man deferreth his anger, 
and it is his glory to pass over a transgression, God says. Proverbs 19.11 An angry man stirreth up strife. And a furious man aboundeth in transgression, God says. Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul, lest you be influenced to become angry at what is angry in the church. In any circumstance, the discretion of a man deferreth his anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression, brother, sister. When a Christian continually fills God with his reactions, I want you now in these last few Moments to listen carefully and prayerfully, very prayerfully, if your heart is condemning you. The greatest single tragedy this world faces today the greatest single tragedy this world faces today is compromising Christianity. Don't doubt that. If you're doubting it, you are so far from God, I want to weep for you if you admitted it. It's not Islam, brother. The greatest single tragedy this world faces today is compromising Christianity. Beginning in your home, to every soul you approach daily, compromising Christianity will undermine the effect of the gospel. Will undermine the effect of the gospel and the honor of Christ's name in this world. I have to repeat that. Beginning in your home, to every soul you approach daily, compromising Christianity will undermine the effect of the gospel and the honor of Christ's name. In this world. In this world. We prayed. Search me. O oh God. That's something for a man to invite God to do honestly. Before a message. But if you had the courage to do that. Because you are part of the single greatest tragedy this earth faces. And the consequences of it are part of your responsibility because of your compromising life. Know my heart. Know my heart. The heart is deceitful above all things, God says in Jeremiah 17.9. Desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know it? For out of the heart, out of the heart, Jesus says, proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, and sexual vice, theft, false witness, blasphemies. Out of the heart, proceed. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. That's a staggering prayer and a desperate, desperate mind with God. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Renew a steadfast, consistent, living of the standard of this book in the light I've been given. 
daily. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit. Steadfast, consistent obedience to the standard of the scriptures in the light I've been given. What does God command you to live these things? Mocking you, knowing you can't. Grieve with you, even if you... No, brother, no, sister. I wonder how many people sitting here tonight desperately, desperately need to cry to God. Desperately. Oh God, forgive me for this shameful, continual, compromising Christianity. With my eyes Continually failing God with my eyes. Continually failing God with my thoughts. Continually failing God with my lips. Continually failing God with my reactions. Oh, how many of you tonight desperately need to look to the blood to reap in mercy here tonight. By coming and doing what God requires of you for cleansing, for forgiveness. When you're real, you sow to yourselves in righteousness and you reap in mercy. Break up the fellow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till He come. How many of you need to seek God desperately and night till He come and rain righteousness upon you? Not just for mercy. To receive mercy. To reap mercy. But to cry from your heart and soul, God, yeah. Create in me a clean heart by the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't just wipe my sins away and let me carry on living a life of compromise. I want thee to deal with me tonight. Out of the heart, God, come all these things. Create in me by the blood of Christ. Wash me through and through. A clean heart. And renew, lead me in the way everlasting from the next step I take. Take me from all this compromise and all that I bring disgrace on you and undermine the effect of the gospel beginning in my home, at my work, at my school. Oh God, how many of you desperately need to ask God and you know you desperately require this of God? And God requires it of you with great grief that you didn't come before. I want those of you that desperately need to cry those words to God tonight from your soul and mean it with every faculty of your being, no matter what the cost of consequences of starting to live this book. Beginning enough. I want those of you that desperately need to ask God with your whole being for this. To stand right. Everyone that desperately needs for God, create in me a clean heart, O God. Everyone, come forward. All who are standing, let's make something sacred here tonight. Not just fleet over because this is a moment all hell is trembling at. Come, don't hesitate. You come stand. Let's make this. There's no altar here, but let's make this an altar, a sacred moment. Seeking God. We don't run away now from those who desperately, desperately. It's not men that you're worrying about now what they think. Not one person, not even your child will judge you. It's what God thinks. It's God's heart that you care about here. But only come if you're desperate. He shall seek me. He shall find me. And he's saying this to his children. If you shall search for me with all your heart, come only if you're desperate. But come. Come closer, everyone that's standing, everyone that's seeking God. The rest of you, you pray for those here. Your life gives you the right. But pray. Everyone in the front, 
Would you bow your heads? I know that you'd like to bow your knees, but sometimes that's not possible. It's it's what's in your heart that God sees. A bowed, humbled heart is all God needs to see. I want you to pray after me this prayer. And don't doubt. Don't doubt it. God will answer this prayer. Don't believe the devil. It will tell you God will turn his face away and say, No, I'm not interested in your desire to be what I ask you to be, what I command, what I cry and call upon you and grieve if you don't. Don't you dare believe the devil. You believe God. He won't turn his face away from his people, his child, who right now desperately wants everything God's longed for so long to be made right in your life by his grace. God does not look at the words. God does not look at the words that proceed out of the mouth. God looks at the heart from whence they come. And if you, as best as you can, though you're praying the prayer I'm leading you, if you let God see this is your prayer, your prayer, though a man's leading you, that's all God will require. He can't ask or expect more than the best of your ability and honesty to say these words from your heart. And he will answer this thing. So I want every one of you to pray aloud with me, but to God as best as you can. That's all. Pray aloud now. Oh God, I come to Thee in shame, in sorrow, in grief. For all the inconsistencies shameful compromises in the light I've been given and knew that I was defying God and defiling myself. But I did these things in defiance of God. Have mercy on me. Forgive me for the grief of my life. Forgive me for every failure, every sin. Wash me in the blood of Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, that cleanseth us from all sin. I put my faith in the blood. I bring nothing to thee. For forgiveness. But the blood of Jesus. God the Son. Wash me. Clean. By the blood of Christ. From every failure. That I may be clean. And pure. In the eyes of God. Because of the blood only that I put my faith in. But let the blood go deeper. Wash me through and through and through and through and through and through. Create in me a clean heart, O God. and Renew a right spirit within me. A steadfast, consistent, living, the standard of this book, in the light I have been given, by thy grace. I absolutely surrender here tonight. I lay my life on the altar of God. Take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee take every faculty of my being and by thy grace live out thy life within me O Jesus King of Kings fill me with the Holy Spirit by that I mean take control of this life 
Absolutely surrendered. Cleansed in the blood. A heart made clean by blood. And a desperation for what's left of life. Though it might be a moment for God to be glorified in my eyes, my thoughts, my lips, my reactions. From the next step I take throughout my day, Glorify thy name through this life by thy grace. And give me the grace to never believe that this night, this prayer can ever substitute the need to daily meet with God. Alone with Jesus meditating the Word of God unhurriedly, delighting myself in the law of the Lord day and night. Every moment God gives me to soak myself in the Word of God and be consumed in prayer and communion with God. For if I never neglect the meeting with God, morning and night. I will not go backwards, but grow from this time forth consistently as more light is given and more grace is given that Christ will be seen me more and more. For I long Christ only, always, will be seen in me by thy grace. Beginning in my home, at my church, at my workplace, and even in front of my enemies. In Jesus Christ's name, for his glory. Amen. Now, beloved, there's no moment in your life that you absolutely surrender and all the light you're given that makes you absolutely perfect. What it does do, though, is when you absolutely surrender to all the light and desperately require God to take control as you have tonight, before it's ups and downs, more downs than ups, if we're honest, but since then, all it does doesn't perfect you. From that time onwards, it's a consistent, wonderful, glorious, growing more and more, conformed into the image of Jesus. Until you die, God's going to be doing more and more of that. But hallelujah, for moments like this, your life can stagger the powers of hell virtually every step you take. So long as you don't miss the time with Jesus. Neglect this in the time that God gives you if you discipline your life ruthlessly so that you can spend time with Jesus by not doing anything that's not necessary in life so that you can find the time because you got to bed early. You can get up early. Because you didn't have to sit hours speaking. Babblings. Brother, sister, Never neglect God. The only danger a Christian has in this world, the only danger a Christian will ever know in this world, is to neglect the quiet time once they're right with God. Don't ever neglect it again. My mind was a little tired tonight. I don't know if it's the old age or what, but I just gave two incorrect references just for the sake of that video. That doesn't matter though. I didn't misquote the word. 
That's the first time I think I've ever misquoted the references anyway. Must be getting old. I want to die climbing. I don't want to retire. My little children said to me, Daddy, when is Daddy going to retire? And I had to think hard. I said, when do you retire if you're a soul winner? For a preacher. When do you stop? Oh my. I want to preach just as I'm dying. Let me die in the pulpit even. Give you a fright, but that's okay. Now, beloved, start tonight. Go and be with Jesus. Fast as you can. And then never ever miss him again. Morning and night. You'll be stunned. You'll never start these failures again. If an isolated failure comes and all the victory God's going to give you, don't give up. You get up. You ask for forgiveness desperately for that one isolated failure and then you be careful on that area. You pray so much about that particular area where you failed. And you watch how God gives you the grace. If, if you renew day by day. Do that which is more than your necessary food to stay strong and alive. Thy word. Now, hallelujah, my heart is warm that you, can you imagine God's heart? Tomorrow, we start at 10 o'clock. I think maybe some have to go to their own churches. I'm not 200% sure there. Shame on you if you're going away. But I don't have to argue with you if you go faithfully. Lovely sign of faithfulness, and if that's where God leads you. I don't know if I'll ever be back here. I really don't. But I thank God I came to see this tonight. It wasn't crowds, but it was what God had in mind. Now you pray for me for tomorrow that God gives me twice as much as anointing, twice as much grace and clarity of thought, and the right word. I live with one fear in my life, that someone could walk out of that door the same way they came in when I preach. Please pray for me. God gives me his word, his heart, and that God visits every heart in a staggering way. Now that's impossible for a man to do, but God can do it if we all pray that. So please pray now. And wouldn't it be wonderful if you dragged people along and shocked the devil, threw his place out? I dare you, go shock the devil. When you're right with God like this, you'll be stunned who will come. You'll be stunned who will come. How God will honor you now. So go try and bring people tomorrow. Morning and night, okay? Ten o'clock in the morning. I'd like to preach a sermon that 90-something percent of evangelical churches worldwide will probably never allow me back in their pulpit again. So, brother, we'll see whether you're one of them. But I'm going to preach it. I'm going to preach it. And it's God's word. God matters.